I think it's only fair to warn you, I will be talking about feces. <laughs> Our current system of doing away with feces is fundamentally flawed and contributes to problems like dust bowls, damaged ecosystems, and drought. Here in the Southwest, we're in our fifth year of drought, a mega drought that could last up to 35 years. Nobody wants to talk about this because we're all afraid of our own shit. <laughs> we aren't going to change the, our nation's problems if we don't come to terms with feces. So before I continue, we're gonna do something together. We are going to face our fear of number two by shouting the word feces on the count of two. Are you ready? One, two, feces! <laughs> that was awesome. Have you guys done this before? I don't know about you, but I'm relieved. <laughs> In the next 60 seconds, over one million Americans will have the luxury of flushing a toilet. Even with low flow toilets, this equates to over a trillion gallons of water per year, or the equivalent of one cubic mile. High efficiency toilets are not the ultimate solution because the problem isn't contained in the flush. Before we can flush, we need a source of water to take from. This means stealing from other habitats. Next, we need infrastructure of pipes and housing for pumps, filtration, and sanitation. All of this consumes power, more water, and billions of tax dollars. In the US, over 10 million gallons of potable water are delivered to our homes every day, but only 5% is used for drinking and cooking. 25% or more is used for flushing. Even more disturbing is what happens after the flush. Wastewater goes back to filtration and treatment and can return to our homes in just a few weeks. The water in your tap could have recently been in your toilet, or worse, your neighbor's toilet. <clears throat> Solids get combined with other human waste like plastics and diapers in the form of toxic sludge, which gets dried and pressed into cakes and thrown into often unlined landfills. Over time, toxins from the sludge can seep back into the ground and contaminate groundwater. Aside from convenience, everything about this system stinks. But we're so dependent, so where do we begin to fix it? Well, tonight we're off to a great start because we've started the conversation. And now we just have to keep it going. And as important as talking about it is how we talk about it. Words affect perception. So if we use words like waste and crap, we are not going to see the inherent value in excrement. Waste, by definition, has no further purpose or use. But excrement is an indispensable, renewable resource used everywhere else in nature. And with time, can give us something that we desperately need soil, to combat dust bowls, to promote vegetation, to grow food. So let's stop calling it waste and crap. Some people call it humanure, which is better, it implies its purpose. But manure still has that smelly connotation to me, so it's only my number two fave. <laughs> I've been thinking really hard about this, and my pants down all-time favorite is brown gold. <laughs> it just sounds like something you could trade in the stock market. Doesn't the word commodity look a lot like the word commodity? <laughs> this is awesome, we're talking about it. An open dialogue is what's gonna open our minds to more sensible alternatives. Here's an alternative that just makes sense. Composting toilets. Unlike conventional toilets, composting toilets require no water, no infrastructure, and no disposal. You do need some planning and patience, and of course, some poo. This is the simplest design. Here's how it works. You sit, you poop, you cover it up with sawdust, and you wait. 
In six to 12 months, you can have nutrient-rich fertilizer, better than store-bought because it's free and chemical-free. And you can add it to soil to grow very local, organic food. That compost and that food travel a matter of yards instead of miles. Which would you prefer? These are some examples of composting toilets in other parts of the world. Their beautiful designs tell us that they not only understand, but are celebrating the true potential of brown gold. And clearly, they're having fun out there. I'm a designer and builder, and I thought, I want to have fun. So I designed a composting toilet with my own city of Santa Fe in mind. And because changing perception is the first hurdle, I'm calling this the in-house. <laughs> I have every faith that composting toilets are someday going to be hip and mainstream. I see you shaking your head, but just you wait and see. People are going to start lining up just to say they pooped in one. <laughs> this one's designed for public use. Its sole purpose is to inform people of water and soil issues and what can be done about them. It not only saves municipal water, but collects its own water and teaches people how to compost properly while dispelling common myths. For example, Composting toilets do not have to smell bad. With proper moisture control and ventilation control, composting toilets can actually be more pleasant than conventional. And the process of composting can be sped up in the presence of UV light, which also kills off pathogens, making it safe for food crops. So every in-house should be surrounded by landscape. What better way to demonstrate all of the benefits of composting brown gold? Soil with compost added can grow more nutritious, more abundant food, and hold many times more water and for longer durations. These are priceless gifts, not just here in the desert, but anywhere that food and water are needed, which is, you know, everywhere. So imagine composting toilets everywhere, in parks, in schools, community gardens, in businesses, even your own homes. And then imagine how you can be a part of this movement. You can start awkward conversations with toilet talk. <laughs> you can come up with your own puns or pet names for poo. You can design an in-house, or at least get in line if you see one. And you all can push for change with a BM, a big movement <laughs> for composting toilets in your city. Thank you.